Hello everybody. Uh, this is Chris. Today we're going to go over um, responsive design using Twitter Bootstrap. And what we're going to do is we're going to build, I don't know if the correct term is a, is a squeeze page or a landing page, but a marketing, uh, a responsive marketing slash squeeze page using Bootstrap and HTML5. Not so much HTML5, but mostly just Bootstrap and uh, Bootstrap CSS properties. Uh, I'm going to be using Sublime Text 2. It's going to be straight HTML, no PHP or anything like that, no Laravel. I'll be getting back into Laravel in a couple more tutorials. But for right now, it's just going to be straight HTML, straight rep responsive design. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm using Sublime Text 2. Uh, it's probably the best text editor and design tool and development tool that you can use for. HTML, PHP, CSS3, uh, that's all I use it for. Uh, I'm actually using a plugin called Emmet, which you can get from, uh, I think it's Control Shift P, and you get go to install, package control, install package, and you can search for Emmet. I already have it installed. I believe it's Emmet. I don't have the CSS snippets in, but I'll go ahead and install that. And the other one is the actual HTML. If you know what Zen coding is, it just lets you uh, really design makes your markup faster. So instead of going H, you know, having to type out all your code like that, I can just go HTML and then HTML5, and it automatically sets up my HTML5 doc type, uh, my car set. And everything else is ready to go. So this is just going to be a product. Uh, you know, like if you went to a website and they were trying to sell a product or something like that, uh, that's all this is really going to be. I've already brought in the Bootstrap things. I have Backbone in here only because I'm learning Backbone JS and require JS and stuff like that. Uh, it requires underscore and it requires backbone and stuff like that. So you can ignore the backbone stuff in here. We're really, really only going to be using the bootstrap JS file and the jQuery JS file. So I wonder if I could do link times three. Yes, we can. So I actually only need two. The first one's going to be just to bootstrap itself, so CSS forward slash bootstrap dot CSS. We're going to use the full ones. We don't have to worry about uh, minifying or anything like that. CSS forward slash, and we're also going to use the responsive characteristics. So bootstrap, uh, what is it, responsive. Uh, that CSS. Okay, the next ones are going to be scripts, so we're going to hit just say script times two, and we're just going to pull in the sources. So source equals the first one's going to be JS forward slash jQuery. We're going to pull in jQuery first. I have the local, like I showed you earlier, I had the local one on here. Um, the next one's actually going to be the Uh, bootstrap one, so bootstrap.js. And that's all for that. Um, to actually make it responsive, we need to add a few more things. There are actually three things to actually use Bootstrap. You have to, in order to use Bootstrap and all its features, you have to include the HTML5 doc type. Uh, you cannot use Bootstrap in HTML4. Not that I know of. If you want it responsive, you have to include this, the responsive CSS, and you also have to include a meta. So your meta is going to be name, it's going to be equal to viewport. It's content be equal to width equals device 
minus width initial scale is going to be 1 equal to 1 so this is the third thing you need for responsive now if you're not building a responsive website then you don't really need this but since we want ours to be responsive this is what we're going to go with um, there's a few other things that we have to do I for one I'm just going to copy and paste this and throw this in here because I like having it on all my pages And it's simply if they have a browser that's less than Internet Explorer 9, I tell them, you know, look, your your browser is crap. Uh, I suggest Chrome uh, or Firefox. But in this instance, I'm just uh, I'm just telling them, you know, look, get Chrome. It's free. So the next one is just going to be. Just the just for the HTML5 shift. So and this is pretty standard. IE9. So if less than IE9, I'm just gonna pull in uh, source equals. What is it? Assets. Four slash js forward slash html5 shiv dot js and this is this html5 shiv is also found I think in my in uh oh what is it uh, html5 boilerplate I believe so and this actually bootstrap I think even has most of the code from each from the boilerplate in it so we're just going to end this right here okay so we have the HTML5 shiv I just throw this one out in case someone has something less than standard I'm just going to do the go ahead and do nav bar and things like that and we're going to have the nav bar stick to the top of the page and so no matter if you're scrolling up and down to the page, the nav bar itself will stick to the top of the page. And to do that, we're just going to simply use a lot of the, boot, the built-in bootstrap uh, features. And we're not doing we're not modifying any of the bootstrap code or anything. We're just using these are just standard bootstrap uh, CSS classes and CSS containers and spans. We're not doing any custom CSS. This is all included in bootstrap. So we we'll have a class of so we're gonna start off with a nav with a div with a class of nav bar and then in this div it's gonna be multiple classes so in Emmet the way we do this is is dot nav bar dot nav bar inverse dot nav bar dash uh, fix top and that's it and I'm just going to assign an ID of nav to it okay so that's that next inside this div we're going to have a couple a few more divs actually a lot more divs and you'll see why in a second so we're just going to use Emmet to do this so we use nav bar Enter. I'm also going to have within that I'm going to have a button with a class of button not button nav bar. Okay. Um,
I'm going to add a couple more things to this button here. There's going to be a type of button. And she's gonna have, we're going to have the HD bootstrap some data toggle and data targets. So the first one's going to be data toggle. It was collapse. And data target. Equals the HD uh, CSS class of nav dot, I mean dot nav collapse. Okay, well now we're going to have three span. Uh, span three. Scratch that. Spans with a class of icon bar. And we're going to have three of those, so times three. And now, now we're just going to have a brand. So if you've ever used, sorry, we have to get, I'm going to go ahead and cut all this because we need a container. Sorry about that. So go in and dot container. we we'll just go ahead and paste all that back in. After this button, I'm just going to have a link. It's going to be A, the hive ref, nothing really. This class is going to equal to brand. And I'm just going to have a product page. Gonna take a look at that, see what that looks like here, and bam, there it is. So here's the fixed nav bar. If it had anything else in it, we could have it. Um, see, it just links back to the product page. We'll go ahead and add some navigation. I mean, typically a squeeze page may or may not, or a marketing page may or may not have uh, links or anything like that, but we're going to go ahead and add them anyways. So, we're going to make another div with a class of nav collapse and collapse itself. Inside here we're just going to have ul.class UL is going to be nav And we're going to have three LIs. Actually, two LIs right now. So LI times two. The first one, sorry. The first one, we're just going to have, it's not going to link to anything. Ex any, we're just doing a front page. Uh, link that to home. Next one, we'll link to about. Next one's going to be a drop. Sorry about that. We need actual the actual link. So a this one's going to be about. Then we're going to make a drop down, and to make a drop down, we're just going to have an li with a class of drop down. And in here we're going to have a we have to have the link has to be. It's just going to show. It's just going to be the action for the drop down. So you'll see what I'm saying in a second. So A, hyperface nothing, class equals drop down toggle. Data toggle equals drop down. Okay, inside right here, we're just going to have. We're just going to say products, because it's a product stage. Uh, 
Next we're just going to have this B, B with a class of, actually I don't even know what B is, but just going to have this carrot, close that, and we need that. So, as that, also we need to, we're going to have our own UL in here. And it's going to have a class of drop down menu. So class equals drop down menu. Inside here, we're going to have to just have two LIs, and it's going to be product one and product two. So LI A, higher up is nothing. We're just going to say product one and for simplicity's sake, we're just going to copy this. Hit number two and say product number two. Draw this. Next, we're going to go outside of our this LI back into the main UL right here, the main nav UL. And we're just going to have another UL. And it's just going to be for like a contact page. So just contact. So let's save that, go back out, refresh, and there we go. You have your home, your about, your products with your drop down, and your contact. This is going to be all for video for part one. And the next part, we'll finish, we'll finish up with uh, the rest of the design. This is only going to be two parts. So uh, it's not going to be a real drawn out. It's pretty simple, and pretty straightforward. But I'll be back shortly with part two. Thank you for watching. Remember, subscribe, share, like, and I'll see you in part two.